Hello everyone, and welcome back to Diablo 4. It has been a little while since the last part. Basically, since the last uh, video, a couple things happened. Uh, the anniversary event ended. So, I basically tried to spend the rest of that event, mainly during the time the treasure goblins were around, to farm as many of those uh, treasure bags that they were dropping as I could to spread them amongst my characters. Um, I was trying to get the highest level ones for the three main ones I've been using, which of course have been my Barbarian, my Druid, and my Necromancer. Well, my two lower ones I haven't really gotten around to using that much yet, my Sorcerer and Rogue. I was getting some other lower level ones, like around 600 or whatever. I was learning that certain levels would yield certain treasure bags of a certain amount of level of gear. So I, once I learned this, I kind of started to farm these in a way to try and like split them among, among um, you know, my characters. And I'll go over what my druid here ended up getting. Um, but before we do that, there's also a couple other things I want to talk about. You'll probably, probably see noticing something. Let me say that again. Blah. You're probably noticing something different about my druid here. A couple things. She has those wings now. Yep. I have pre-ordered the expansion. I have been waiting for your return. Okay, so it's actually not showing it right now, but yeah. But obviously with the wing showing there, you can tell that I pre-ordered that version of the expansion to get those along with the other awards that come with it. And you can see I have my cute little tiger cub pet here. Isn't she adorable? The Wings of the Faith, you can see, is right there. You can also see some of the other... Like, no effects here, but you can see some of the other pets here. That's Natalia. Harotli. And Alcor. So I think Natalia would be with us uh, throughout the rest of this run here. She's so cute. I love her so much. There's a couple other things, though. I mentioned how when you get that version, you also get a bunch of platinum just kind of, like, added for free, right? And I mentioned what I was going to use it for. Well, now, as you probably know, the war cat here came with that. So, yes, we do have that uh, war cat now. However, I'm not going to be using that. Instead... We are going to be using Invincible. So yes, I got the Invincible bit here, which came with, of course, the mount and the armor. You can see this is the War Cat battle dress for that, but that's not what we're using. That's the Midnight Harness on that horse. But no, we're using Invincible, because of course we are. Now, I was a little torn on whether or not to use the Helm of Domination. But I ended up deciding we're going to have Frostmourne. Because of course we are. However, it turns out that's not going to be the only Warcraft thing here. I want to show you guys something they just recently added to the shop. Like this week. Let me show you more, traveler. Behold! Warcraft Legends. <laughs> so let's just say some people are speculating they're going to be working on a Diablo Warcraft crossover going on here. So, for the Barbarian, we get a armor and a weapon that is very similar to that of... King Varian Rin. We get his crown, his armor, his gauntlets, his pants, 
his boots or greaves, and of course, Chalamane. Which does look pretty good. It's basically the same thing because if you want to use it for two-handed or a dual wielding, you know, it'll, it works either way. For the Druid, unfortunately, I think this is probably the most disappointing of these ones available here. The first Seder. So, for the Druid, they decide to go with Xavius from uh, Legion. It's... It's okay. You've got this mask here. You've got the shoulders, which, you know, hey, we, we know about the shoulders from War Warcraft, of course, because we farmed those in the Emerald Nightmare Raid. We've got the claws. The furs. The hooves. We've got the flesh of the first satyr. Basically tattoos to kind of go along with that. It's not bad. It's even got this kind of like effect on the face and such. And then we've got a totem, the Thorn of Xavius. Like I said, it's okay. But honestly to me, of these five, it's the most disappointing to me. And then we have... Zalatath. For the Necromancer. The Eye. The Cowl, along with the Shoulders. Mm-hmm. Got the rest of the outfit here. We've got markings, the voice of Zalatath, which, as you can see, are these markings all around the body. Very cool looking. And, of course, the Blade of the Black Empire. I mean, if you're a shadow priest, you know. And then the one I think is the best or my favorite of these. Very good. Sylvanas for the rogue. And it's mainly because of the extra effects on this. So we've got Sylvanas' hood with the effects here, the effects on the eyes. We've got the shoulder pads. You know, the famous shoulders that she wore with the feathers. And look at the extra visual effects on here. We've got, of course, her gloves. Her pants. Her boots. The wind runners. We've got markings called Sylvanas' flesh to kind of give you more of an undead skin kind of look here. Pretty cool. And then we've got her bow. Death Whisper. With these extra effects, really cool looking. And then, for the Sorcerer, we have Kael'thas. With the eyes, very cool extra effect there. The, of course, the shoulders with the, the orbs. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the rest of the outfit, the robes. The slippers and fellow Malorn with some extra really cool visual effects there and then last but not least <laughs> I think this is a joke it stirs you yes the 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 mount the celestial steed mount oh my gosh the mount that uh Johnny, you know who he rides. <laughs> I've always hated this mount. I'm sorry, I'm not fond of this mount in WoW, and I I never use it. And I'm just seeing it here. I'm just like they. I felt like they had to toss it in just as a joke. Because geez, Louise, here's the problem. They all cost twenty eight. Hundred platinum each. Okay, the the this twenty five hundred, but still, that's twenty five dollars each. So just to recap, in case you didn't catch what my 
what my the point I'm making is here. If you want all three, all five of these, if you're just forget about the celestial seed mount. If you want all five of these, that's a hundred and twenty-five dollars. I'm getting really sick of these paywalls. Now, this isn't an actual paywall because a paywall is like what they do in mobile games where they literally put a wall up to progress to prevent you from progressing in the actual game unless you pay money. This of course is just for some cosmetic stuff. So it's not a big deal. Even though it's really cool stuff, it's going to cost you a hefty bit of money. Which is disappointing. Very disappointing, you know. It's like I'm very disappointed in you Blizzard. Very disappointed. So, now let's talk about the character we're playing in this playthrough, my druid here. So, let me go here and uh, show you. I was able to acquire some interesting uniques. Now, I unfortunately did not get at least one of the uniques I was really trying to get, which of course was the, the uh, one that gives you the permanent werebear. I was not able to get that, unfortunately. I did get some other ones I thought would go well with it, like Vasily's Prayer. Your Earth skills are now Werebear skills, and they fortify you. Uh, Flesh Render, casting a defensive skill, uh, deals damage to nearby poisoned enemies, which if you're going with kind of a poison Werebear build, you could, that would work out well. Effects that heal you beyond 100% grant you a barrier. Lightning Storm Critical Strikes cause lightning to strike twice. So if you're going with a lightning... A druid build that would work out nice. Killing an enemy with a shred grants stealth for two seconds. Breaking stealth with an attack grants guaranteed critical strikes. Claw is now a storm skill and also casts storm strike at 136% normal damage. Gain a bonus when you kill with a shape-shifting skill. Werewolf, your next non-ultimate werebearer skill, will cost no resource and has no cooldown. Your next werewolf skill will heal you for 689 when damage is first dealt. Your wolf companions are now infused with the power of the storm, dealing lightning damage and gaining the storm howl ability. Yeah. Yeah, there's that one... That one, eh. And that one's okay. So I put those away for now. You also notice that my wolf companions are gone. That's because, well, let's just say I don't think I'm going to need them, and it's probably going to be a little too easy at that point. So I have now a 925 version of that same unique chess piece that gives us permanent werewolf. Yeah. And that's going to be the only unique I'm going to use right now because I felt like having the other ones was going to make things a little too easier because those companions were probably also going to one-shot things before I could probably show some stuff off. Plus, they also have been a little buggy. The thing is, those companions can actually have some issues. You actually saw this in earlier parts of this playthrough where they were actually kind of like going into the floor. So I just decided to go ahead and let them rest. They're just kind of chilling in the kennel while I go out and do stuff on my own. But I don't think I'm going to need them. So basically, I've also kind of changed up some of the aspects that we're going to be using here. Again, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be super overpowered for the rest of this way. Because the game just simply won't let me buff up, you know, bump up the difficulty. I just can't. Until I actually, like, finish the campaign, do that other stuff. So, anyways... So basically, uh, to go along with what we have, I'm also using this one where we gain damage reduction while shapeshift into a werewolf, which of course will be all the time. Grizzly Rage is now a werewolf skill, so we ha still have the dire werewolf aspect here. When rabies infects an enemy, reduce the cooldown. Debilitating Roar is now a werewolf skill. In addition, addition Debilitating Roar will now immobilize poison enemies. The duration of Grizzly Rage is increased by 7.5 seconds. Blood Howl will increase critical strike chance by 12 and a half. While Dashing Shred seeks out nearby poisoned enemies. You deal increased damage when hitting, uh, hitting a poison enemy as a werewolf or a crowd controlled enemy as a... Or a poison enemy as a were, werebear or crowd controlled enemy as a werewolf. 
and critical strikes with shred will deal per damage dealt as lightning to the target and surrounding enemies. So I basically change around my build to include debilitating roar, blood howl, rabies, grizzly rage, claw, and shred. So basically, what I've you know the reason I have some of these other ones about increased damage against like poison enemies is because we're using uh, rabies to be able to kind of like spread around the poison and such. So let's get a feel for this not only my new build but also how things are going to be going here in terms of like how uh, strong I'm probably going to end up being. Let's go ahead and uh, perhaps head on over to a few of these dungeons and see how we do. There's the new portal I got for pre-ordering the expansion. All right. What? Hold on. Wait a minute. Why all of a sudden is the armor not on? Hold on. We gotta fix this. Also, by the way, welcome to Season 5. Yeah, since the end of the last video, Season 4 has ended and Season 5 has started with the new Infernal Hordes stuff. There we go. You can see the extra effect there, courtesy of Invincible. There's a glimpse right there at some of the new Infernal enemies, including the Infernal Butcher. Which I'm very curious if he's going to show up and if that version of the Butcher is actually going to show up in dungeons when we do them, so maybe we'll see. Oh, uh, by the way, in case you're curious, this is how I've also currently set up my boons for the time being, where now I've got the extra movement speed and impairment and uh, impairment reduction, attack speed, critical strike damage, dealing damage has a chance to restore spirit, just because it feels like at times I am in need of spirit, and of course, mass case, this is basically never going to change. If I make another druid, which I probably will at some point... Grace me with your power. Grant me the strength to continue to carry out your will. Welcome, traveler. Your day of glory is at hand. With your sacrifice, the rebuilding of this world can begin. <clears throat> He basically beat himself there. <clears throat> this is what I mean about how I'm probably super overpowered right now. Covenants for seven. In the mountains, the mother and I saw a village. The people, cold and hungry, prayed to a light that would give them no warmth. But in her presence, a new fire was stoked in their hearts. They would never go hungry or feel cold again. Yeah. I think I heard that if I change the hair or the hair color of my druid, it will change the color of the fur on my werewolf here.
Hmm. Let's go here next. Figure we'll just kind of go through these dungeons with my new gear and build and see how it goes. It's probably going to be kind of laughable. I had someone comment recently about how they felt like a game with no challenge is not really a game because it has to have that by definition in order to actually be a game. He was talk. He was saying this in a video that I was doing about Pandaria Remix, which any of you who know what that event is knows that being overpowered is literally one of the main points of that whole event. But I wonder how he would feel watching this. Why do you petition the old, the ancestors, old woman? I pray for kith and kin, for those lost. To the crag song. Dark spirits live in these lands. They call out, luring those who pause to listen into eternal slumber. In such foul times, the will to resist the song grows harder. They walk the crags now, fleshless and cursed. If you travel by that road, would you collect any mementos that the dead drop? It would ease an old woman's worries. Are you all right? Oh, thank the gods! Most people don't bother to look up. I I'm Nazar. Do you think you might be able to get me down? I don't want to die up here. Those spineless thugs fled when you slew Esmond, including the one with the key. They're probably camped nearby. What are you doing out here? Sitting in a cage waiting for death. What does it look like? I was a merchant before. <clears throat> This, and a good one, too. Why didn't they kill you? Your guess is as good as mine. Maybe they were hoping for a ransom. They were fooling themselves if they thought my life was worth more than what I can haul in my caravan. Hmm. Did you see that? That little effect when invincible charges. Pretty sure that was Syndragosa. Yep. That's Syndragosa. Not quite as uh, nice looking as the wings in D3. But hopefully that's something they can be able to actually fix. They've also made some other quality of life changes since the last time that we did this. Such as if you already have a certain manual or a certain higher level of a manual, it won't continue to drop for you. Once you have that manual, it, it will stop dropping. And basically the only thing that uh, would drop is a higher level of it. Unless you just have the highest level, in which case it won't drop for you anymore. Yeah, this is way too easy. 
I am super overpowered at this point. And unfortunately, guys, I'm, the only thing I could do to fix this is to literally just find lesser gear and put that on. And I don't want to have to do that. I prefer the method in D3 where this would not be an issue in D3 because I would just simply be able to have the option to turn up the difficulty. That's why when you... Okay, when I eventually go back to D3 and continue my alternate run with my wizard, you'll see me playing on, like, Torment 13. We have that. Gotta work my way over to get that. Need more dexterity for that bonus. So we'll grab that. So we can also grab this as well. But yeah, in D3, they made it where if you had already done this on one character, you could just simply play on higher difficulties on alts. Even brand new alts. If I made a brand new character in D3 right now, I could start them on Torment 10 if I wanted. Keep in mind that the idea is that your alts would have paragon levels at that point, so it would be significantly easier for you. And it's another way to be able to let you level up faster because you'll be also able to get a lot more XP on those higher difficulties and therefore be able to... I have heard what is transpiring in the labyrinth. Three summoners driven mad by this... Grinning button, as it is called. Daughter, why do you persist in trying to break the demon? You, you have nothing to prove. You are more the Vizgerai than I was at your age. There is wisdom in knowing when to move on. Seal the demon and its minions away. Return to the clan, please. I am asking as your father. Do not make me command it as the Grand Summoner. And it's a system that I really, really like and enjoy. The fact that you have all these extra quality of life features. Hold on. I imagine it's probably a little hard to hear what I'm saying because I'm sure the effects are a little loud. So I don't really mean for them to be that loud. So if it's a little annoying to hear it, like, kind of cut out me and, you know, you know. Anyways, I realized that some of these sound effects were probably uh, not sounding great with the mix of me talking. So let me go ahead and turn that down to make it a little easier. In case you guys are actually more interested in what I'm saying as opposed to listening to the sound effects of the game. But it's one of those quality of life features in D3 I really like and really wish was in this. The option and flexibility for you as the player to decide how you want to play with your alts in D3 in terms of like, I want to be able to play on this difficulty for this reason with this gear so I can be able to also take advantage of these rewards and level up even faster. Like there's a lot of option player choice in that game. Here, I don't have nearly as much of player choice because as, I, as you're seeing, I am just tearing through these guys and I can't make it more interesting or more challenging or difficult for myself with this higher level of gear that my character has even at this level because it just won't let me have that option. I don't get this option because for whatever reason they feel like they need to keep this to a character thing as opposed to an account thing. The game should have an option where it has acknowledged, oh you have already beaten the campaign. Now yes there is an option to skip the campaign that is fine. But if you're doing what I'm doing, which is I am now playing through this campaign to show you guys on YouTube, you know, the campaign and such, I would like to have the option to also crank up the difficulty on this character, which now has overpowered gear, to be able to make it where it's not as much of a, like, super easy time. I do want it to be a little easier because I don't want, you know, us to have the issues we had in Diablo 2, where I was having to constantly 
you know, redo certain uh, attempt fights and such just to try and beat them so we could actually continue the story. And there was even a time, a couple of times, where I was concerned we may not be able to actually finish it. Because I was afraid I was going to run to a wall that I had no way to fix or get around for us to actually finish the story. And fortunately, I was able to work around a couple of those. And in so doing, we were actually able to finish it, but the concern was still there. That's not an issue here when it comes to D3 and D4. You do have the capability to actually make sure that these things are not as much of an issue as they were before in D2, but still, I'm not going to buy with that event. But you now have this issue where now instead of it being too hard and running into a wall where you can't progress, now you're having this issue where if you are able to be fortunate enough to get you know stuff from an event like what I did with this character, then, well... Did you see how quick I killed that boss? And there's nothing I can really do about it other than the only option I can think of is to literally either take my gear off or replace it with lesser gear. And that should not be my only option as part of my point here. There should be another option. And I'm going to do... What's that option? Is it... No, it's not that. What's the option here? There's supposed to be an option here that you can just straight up leave the dungeon. And I'm trying to remember what that option is. Because it's not... Hold on, it's not the teleport button. What is it? Where is that option? I know it's here. Where is it? Where is it? I've seen an option to leave the dungeon. I, I know it exists. I just am not seeing... Oh, oh, it's right here. Derp. Now, see, that's another thing. It's like, why should I have to move the map over to that icon and click on that? Where is the other just option right here to be like, leave dungeon, you know? Now it's saying, hey, go talk to him. I'm like, where? Oh, hey, another player. Oh, it's a uh, necromancer. Look at the rabies spread. Look at the rabies spread. Ho, 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 ho. I just stand here and watch it spread. It kills everything around. Mm-hmm. Huh, what's this? They keep spawning, it keeps respreading. I must wait a moment. I'm legit trying to remember where I'm supposed to go find this guy. Is it inside the dungeon? I must wait a moment. I do really want to see, like, how effective some of these builds I've seen in videos and such can actually be in the end game. you know? Like, I've seen videos about poison werewolf builds, storm werewolf builds. Just some really awesome, cool-looking, flashy, effective, cool werewolf builds. 
And then, of course, the well-known Pulverize uh, Werebear build as well. Aha. Again, I'm really trying to see, like, where this other guy is right here. Like, where are you? You're... No, it's not that. Ah, uh, man, I, I don't know. If he was, like, inside the dungeon, I'm gonna be a little annoyed, you know? Like, seriously? I was just there, and he's already just kind of in there? Near the grinning one. Please don't tell me he was, like, inside there. You know? Because <laughs> it's not showing me on the map where he is. And it just makes me wonder, is he actually, like, inside the dungeon? Did I just completely mess that up? I'm gonna go back there. I hope not. If he's, like, inside, I'm gonna be really annoyed. Like, come on. Like, I know it's the Grinning Labyrinth, but seriously. If it's where I was, where the boss was... Yeah, see, again, it's telling me, go outside. And apparently the map for this dungeon has already been cleared. So I am just kind of extremely annoyed right now. Like, where... <laughs> like, it's not even showing my map. It's supposed to, like, have it selected, right? But it's not showing anything. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I've been like, you know what, maybe I'll just go ahead and do some of these side quests off camera for you guys. But I do find that some of them have some interesting story, because like I've been saying, you'd be surprised how much the, the side quests in this game are actually the better stories than what you're getting in the main story. This is all that I could find. This talisman belonged to Kokachin, and I recognize this handwriting. Perhaps the old scribe, Oris. It will take time, but I will ensure each object is identified properly. Thank you. Oh my gosh, seriously? Now it's showing that he's right there. Why didn't it show him there before? Like, it's like, go speak to him right over there. And it's like, then all of a sudden he's not there. And then his location gets uh, removed. So am I to understand that what's basically happening here is they're like, hey, go find this location that he's at. The grinning one? Where is that? Well, try to figure it out yourself. We're not going to mark it on the map for you. That'd be too easy. Because, you know, all the people who complain about uh, map markers would be very upset about that. So we hope you were paying attention to what was being said about where it's located. Oh, now he's here. It's rather odd. It was like he was phasing in and out. <sighs> it gnaws at me. So close. So close to its gifts. But first, 
I must be proven. The grinning one must see all guy is worthy. The dust showed me a labyrinth. Winding walls, endless halls, laughing from the deep. It wants ancient offerings returned. Offerings of devotion. Offering from those once worthy. But Ogai is not made for demons and darkness. No, 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 no. You brave the shadows. Bring what was lost to Ogai. Then the grinning one may speak to you too. So now he wants us to go back into the dungeon. Oh my gosh. Did I really go through this unnecessarily? Uh... I guess I must have. Ah, uh, feels bad, man. Feels bad. You know, when you do quests like this, you're just hoping that you're going to have a decent resolution by the end of it. Like, if I'm going to have to do all this, there better be something worth it by the end. Wait a moment. I must wait a moment. Well, this is one of the good things about being an overpowered character is that if you're having to do this again because you mistakenly already went through it once, you can just kind of blaze through it really fast and be like, all right, I'm just going to go through this really fast and get what I need. Wait a moment. And now it wants me to return. Because, hey, got what I want, so now let's leave. And then he's going to be like, all right, now go back in and take down the one thing you need to get approval. Yes, yes! The Grinning One guides all to fortune who are worthy. I will speak of your strength when the time is right. Now, place the offerings on the stones. Okai will have gifts long overdue. Sure. We know how this works. I hear it! The old one speaks to me! Mm, yes! Ogai wishes for all! Is worthy of all! Gifts beyond time! Gifts beyond... F flesh? Uh, and, and this is... good? Price? What price? Yeah. His jaw is ripped open. A horrid smile is spread across his face. The jawbone is missing. Yep, yeah, that's, uh... Yep, yeah, I can't say we didn't predict that was going to happen. This is Diablo, after all. 
It's kind of the M.O. when you start getting involved in those kind of things in this setting, right? Ugh. Oh, the choppiness. I apologize. Sadly, I don't have a top-of-the-line machine to make it where this is not an issue here. I hope to at some point, but I have some other things to uh, take care of financially before I start looking at upgrading my PC and such. How fortunate that this seems to quest seems to coincide with an event. How nice. Just a teeny bit more. I'm not ready yet. There's a greed shrine. It is done. Gold! I found gold! say this when you get some of these items from the shop even if you got to spend something like that on it you at least will get some stuff that actually has some extra visual stuff that you don't really see in other places in the game you know so at least you're kind of like getting some decent like flashy stuff i guess i could call it you know i must wait for your money's worth i guess you could say so it's like even though you know it this invincible thing did cost a good amount of platinum, you know, which, you know, depending on how you acquire the platinum can uh, end up, you know, costing you a decent amount of money. At least you're sort of getting your money's worth when it comes to, like, visuals, you know? Like, not just, like, a mount and armor and stuff, but you also get, like, extra visual effects that other mounts just don't have. And speaking of treasure... There we go. Hello, Molly. Like, there's only, like, one other mount I think I have right now that has this kind of cool visual effect when you're riding it. So it's like, well, at least you're getting like so, you know a mount with some extra cool visual stuff that makes it very appealing to see and makes it like I'm low it's on like spirit. well, yeah, it cost me stuff, but I am getting something that other mounts just don't necessarily have, which you could probably make a case they should, but then they couldn't justify how much you're paying for it. And let's that, you know. I'm not in favor of these kind of like microtransaction shops, you know. It's somewhat okay that it's for just like cosmetic stuff that's not for anything that actually affects your gameplay. It's all just like, you know, cool extra stuff just to look cooler, you know. So how does freedom feel? I'll be damned. I didn't think you'd bother coming back. Thank you. There's no chance you have any extra healing potions on you, is there? Yes, I do. Take one. <gasps> Thank you for your kindness. 
A Borza, the bastard who put me in that cage, took some of his men and fled into the caverns below. He'll just put someone else in that cage if we don't put an end to him now. Yes, we. I, I just need your help to find a weapon. Dude, seriously. Like, I'm a druid. Just ask me to go ahead and do it, and I'll, I'll handle it for you. I've got rotten aim, but I'll try not to shoot you in the arse. Let's go. He's hiding in the tunnels nearby. I guess there was a number of possible weapons you could have found and given to him, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> At least I don't think it does. Can't wait to see the look on Forza's face. When he sees that you brought an overpowered werewolf to help you? Yeah, no, I would imagine he would have quite the oh crap kind of look on his face. Like, well, my men and I are screwed. I'm not ready yet. Borza! I know you're here, you bastard! Show yourself! Well, well. Someone let you out of your cage, did they, rat? Suppose you learned your lesson. I... I know I did wrong. But I brought you the troublemaker who wrecked our camp. A little gift, wrapped up nice. Why, you little... <laughs> no! Damn it! I... This was my chance! <laughs> what a waste of a second chance at life. Indeed. So I believe... Alright, so there's this one here, and this one here. Okay. We'll be doing a couple more of these dungeons when we return. Stay tuned.